Hello, good morning, and welcome to my Secret Place Devotion, where we get to spend time together studying the Word of God and being able to experience the presence of the Lord together. Today, we're going to look at a topic called the time perspective, and we're going to study one of the very important things that the Holy Spirit will have us study this morning. And in order to do that, I want us to look at a theory that a Harvard professor, you know, came up with. His name is Professor Philip Zimbrado, and he came up with a theory called the theory of time perspective. Let me explain what the theory of time perspective says. Now, he had gone through a study of 30 years, and at the end of the study, he came up with a principle that he said determines whether how people succeed and whether people fail in life. So he says that people succeed or fail in life based on their understanding of their use of time perspective. So the question now is what is time perspective? Time perspective is the ability of an individual to see far enough in order to make big decisions. In other words, if you can see far enough and based on what you can see very far ahead of your destiny or your future, you're able to make decisions today it will determine whether you will succeed or you will fail in other words if you don't look far enough if you can't see far enough and based on what you're seeing tomorrow able to make decisions you are going to have a lot of problems and you're going to fail in life and you know what the bible completely agrees with the theory of time perspective as we look at today's devotion, you're going to understand why. Now, you know what? Because people don't understand time perspective and they don't put time perspective into consideration when they are making various decisions, they have a lot of problems. So you see some people who are state governors, some people who are presidents of nations, because they're not able to see their future when they were very young, sometimes they make wrong decisions in their life partners. Now, it's not just restricted to presidents of, of countries and things like that. So, example, someone is young and he makes a decision based on ma his married decision based on the fact that he likes the man or he likes a woman and he does not put time perspective into consideration. In other words, what is my destiny? What am I going to become in future? 20 years from now, what can I see? And then he just marries a woman today or marries a man today because of what he or she can see of today because he likes the man or he likes the woman like I've already said. He's going to have problems because as he steps into his destiny, he or she is going to find out that that man or that woman may have been okay for today but because of where he's going to, the man or the woman he or she married will not follow him into the future. That is why certain people, especially in Africa, when they begin to advance, you know, in their careers or begin to advance in, in the society, sometimes they want to change the woman that they marry because they want to now get a woman that suits into their present condition. Why are they having those problems? Because they didn't put the theory of time perspective into consideration. In other words, when you want to make decisions today, look far ahead. The quality of the decisions you make today is dependent on how far ahead you can see. Now, you cannot make decisions based on just today. I'm going to tell you a story that I, I was watching CNN a few days ago, or rather a few months ago, and, you know, they featured a certain gentleman who is very wealthy in a country called Liberia. Now, he's a, um, the owner of a hotel, a very successful hotel, and his hotel was doing exceptionally well. He was a very, very wealthy man. But today, the man is extremely bankrupt. What happened to the man? The theory of time perspective. Now, because the man was very successful, he borrowed money from the bank to you know enlarge his hotel to decorate the place and do you know a lot of renovation and all that he invested a lot of money in the hotel the moment he borrowed the money it was over 500 million dollars according to what the CNN report says the bank gave him because you know he'd had credit history he's been doing extremely well and he had one of the biggest hotels in his country then the Ebola crisis hit his nation now obviously people were no longer going to hotels you know people left hotels people were not you know um, patronizing him anymore and of course his business collapsed and the bank came after him for the money he had borrowed from the bank and so because of all that pressure he, you know he lost because of all that pressure of course he lost weight he became discouraged he couldn't even come up with new ideas of what to do and the bank were not interested in whether there was a bola or not they came after them because they are business people they gave you money and you need to deliver and that is how someone that was very wealthy became poor and started begging for food because he couldn't see far enough before he made his decision now that is why god wants us before we take any decision there's something very important we need to have, and it is called the spirit of 
counsel. What is the spirit of counsel? It is actually one of the seven spirits of God. And if you understand, this whole week we'll be looking at the seven spirits of God and we'll be looking at the different things that the Holy Spirit came to planet Earth with, the different things that the Holy Spirit came into our lives carrying. And I've said it so many times that the Holy Spirit didn't just come with speaking in tongues. He came with so many things. One of the things he came with, if you look at the Bible in Isaiah 11 verse 2, the seven spirits of God, one of them is the spirit of counsel. What is the spirit of counsel? It is divine advice, especially when you want to make decisions. What is the spirit of wisdom? Because someone's going to ask me, what is the difference between wisdom and counsel? Wisdom is the divine ability to know what to do when you don't know what to do. But the spirit of counsel is what gives you advice when you want to make a decision. Now, let's read a scripture verse for today. It's actually record in, recorded in the Bible in um, Numbers chapter 27, verse 18. You see what Jesus said, or rather what God was talking to Joshua about the, the role of the priest. He was actually talking to Moses, and he said concerning the role of the priest, verse 18. I'm going to read from verse 18 of Numbers chapter 27. It says, So the Lord said unto Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay your hands upon him. Have him stand before Eleazar the priest and the entire assembly, and commission him in the presence of the people. Give him some of your authority, so that the whole Israel community will obey him. He is to stand before Eleazar the priest, who will obtain decisions for him by making counsel of the Urim and the Turim before the Lord. At his command, the entire community of Israel will go out, and at his command, they will come in. In other words, what God was telling Moses is that Joshua anoint him, commission him before the people. But also there is a man called Eleazar. Before Joshua will do anything, let Eleazar come and inquire of me. Another translation said, let Eleazar come and get counsel from me. Joshua, you have the spirit of might. So you can fight battles and you can win those battles. But you cannot go into any battle without first of all asking for counsel from Eleazar. What was upon Eleazar was what is called the spirit of counsel. In the Old Testament, they used to function with the Urim and the Turim. In other words, the Urim Urim and Turim is, is um, something that the Lord put in place so that if the Urim is on this side, you know, yes, go ahead. If, it's on the, if, it's on the, if it falls on the Turim, you say, no, don't go ahead. What God was saying, never ever make a decision. Never ever go into battle without the spirit of counsel. Look at the man I just told you about. That was, he was a very wealthy man. What destroyed him was he did not get wise counsel from the Lord. And many times we take decisions based on what our eyes can see, based on what the society is saying, based on what the news channel is saying, instead of based on what God is saying. The spirit of counsel is that counsel that tells you what to do when you need to make a decision. You know, there's an interesting story in the book of um, George, in the book of Joshua chapter 9, when God specifically told Joshua, you know what, destroy all the small villages around you and all of that. Now, the Gibeonites had heard what Joshua was doing. They saw what he did in Jericho. They saw what the Lord used him to do in the, in the city of Ai. And they came up with a plan. They said, this Joshua, when he takes the Israelites to battle, they are going to destroy us. So they came up with a plan. Pre let us pretend that we came from three days, um, a three days journey, as in thousands of miles away. Let us take stale bread. Let us take, you know, stale clothes and pretend we came from very, very far. And they came and they told Joshua, oh, we, we, we came from very far. We are not your neighbors. We want you to make a pact with us, not to destroy us. And the Bible specifically records in that particular chapter, in Joshua chapter 9, that the people did not ask counsel of the Lord. They went ahead and made a treaty with the Gibeonites not to destroy them. A few days later, Joshua realized that the Gibeonites were actually his neighbors and they were the very same people God told him to destroy. But now he had gone to make a, a covenant with those people based on what his eyes could see. The Bible clearly says they made a covenant without inquiring of the Lord. In other words, they did not ask for the spirit of counsel to come into operation and therefore they disobeyed God and went and made a pact with people that God said they should actually destroy. So if you do not ask God for the spirit of counsel, you're going to make a lot of bad decisions in life. You know, so never step into battle. Never take that decision based on what the world is saying. One of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of counsel. One of the things the Holy Spirit is doing, if you look at John chapter 16, he said the Holy Spirit is our counselor. He's meant to give you advice. You know, the Bible says in the multitude of counsel, people succeed in war or plans, you know, succeed. So you can imagine if 
ordinary men, when they advise you, you're going to succeed. How much more when the Spirit of God gives you counsel? What do you do whenever you're faced with a decision? Ask the Spirit of counsel. How do you get the Spirit of counsel? It is the same way you get the Spirit of wisdom. It is the same way you get the Spirit of understanding. What do you do? You go into the presence of the Lord and ask God, let the Spirit of counsel, let it be activated in my life. The Spirit of counsel is what helps you to be able to advise people rightly. When they come to you, they have a problem. They're about to take a decision. Where to live, who to marry, what to do in certain in difficult situations that requires a decision to be made. If the spirit of counsel is upon your mouth, you know exactly what to advise the person. What is the spirit of counsel? It is divine advice from the direct from the throne of God. And when the Holy Spirit gives that advice, he's giving that advice based on tomorrow, based on the future, based on what he can see, based on things that the human eye cannot see, based on the things that the human ears cannot hear. I've often said the physical eyes are blind. The physical ears are blind. There is another eye there's another ear. When the Holy Spirit gives you wise counsel, He's giving with supernatural insight. What is the Holy Spirit telling us this morning? Stop making decisions without asking for the spirit of counsel. Stop going into battle. Stop taking jobs. Stop moving from city to city without, first of all, asking for the spirit of counsel. And we've understood today that the spirit of counsel is divine advice that come from the throne of God, especially when you want to make decisions. If you run a search throughout the Bible, you find out that the spirit of counsel always came into operation whenever decisions are to be made. So let me read a scripture as we close this morning. Judges chapter 18, verse 5, from the, new, from the King James Version, it says, Ask counsel, we pray thee of God, that we may know whether our way shall be prosperous. In other words, before you take a step, ask the Lord, let the spirit of counsel be activated in my life. Because if you do not do that and you make a decision based on what your eye can see, you are going to cry sooner or later. Just like the example that I already gave you about the man who today became extremely bankrupt. You know, just because he refused to put this, the principle of time perspective into operation. And the Bible even tells us in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, that when the Spirit of the Lord will come upon Jesus, he will no longer judge by what he can see or what he can hear. He's going to judge based on the guidance that comes from the Holy Spirit. Let us quickly read that. I think that should be the last scripture we're going to read today. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2 and verse 3. Okay, I'll read it from the New International Version. He said, the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Now watch this. He said, he will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. In other words, when these spirits are an oppression in your life, you're not meant to be living your life based on what you can see, based on what you can hear. You're meant to be living your life. You're meant to take decisions. You're meant to do different things in your life based on knowledge from another world, based on divine knowledge, based on divine wisdom, based on divine counsel. And that is why, how Jesus was operating. The Bible says the seven spirits of the Lord rested upon him and therefore he was no longer judging based on his eyes and his ears and all of that. And that is how God expects you to live your life. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. As you begin to ask the Lord for the spirit of counsel to be in operation in your life where you make decisions based on the advice given to you by the Holy Spirit and by God. Have a beautiful day. I'll be back again tomorrow at my sacred place devotion where we're going to share other things that the Holy Spirit came into planet Earth with. God bless you.